Ian, well, I think we'll start with with kind of the COVID and games on, game, games off situation. Due to play Chesterfield, it was yesterday, I think. Well, we Wednesday today, aren't we? I mean, is that frustrating? Were you itching to get that game on if, if it could have happened? Yeah, but I guess they were the same, really. I mean, they were. I'm sure everybody wanted that game. Fans, both clubs, everybody wanted to play the game, but. Um, when they obviously had a, a bit of an outbreak in the club, which has been a common thing am amongst many teams now. Um, and when that happens, then it comes out of our control. So um, our situation is is fine in terms of COVID, but um, but of course we understand that not every club is, and you're seeing many many games getting called off as a result. So yeah, we we were ready to play. We were desperate to play that game. We were you know we wanted to be. Um, we wanted to be back out on the pitch, but we totally understand the situation and it is what it is. So we just have to adapt and prepare for the next one. So just to check, you said you guys were fine. You've not had any COVID cases recently? No, not recently. So we, we, we're we okay at the moment. Uh, we're managing the situation well, but we're testing on a regular basis. So, of course, we understand that it can change quickly, but at the moment the playing squad is good um, and we're uh, yeah we're happy to prepare for Boxing Day that way. I just wondered, I'm interested to know, have you had to sort of lay down any extra rules to them to be, be extra careful or anything like that? No, I mean, we've tried to bring some, um, yeah, mask wearing in, in, in inside and um, be more careful around eating and sanitising things and the usual restrictions. And I, I guess we just try to advise the players when they leave the building. It's more important when we, we, we can control a lot of things inside, but... Of course, when the players leave, it's uh, they they have their own free will, and uh, we just try to advise them on the the most sensible course of uh, of how to how to um, yeah try to to control the situation the best way possible. I think that goes for everybody really. So we try and do that, and and at the moment we've had I think relative success certainly compared to others at the moment, but we're certainly not. Um, overconfident with the situation because we know it can change fast. I just wonder how much that the ever-changing situation, I guess the unknown about what might be around the corner, is it creating havoc with your plans or are you just kind of carrying on that you're playing Boxing Day, whether it's in front of crowds or, or no crowd? Do you know what? We th There's just some things that we can't control and I can say that it causes havoc and stuff like that to make it, but no, it, it, we, it is what it is. Um, I think everybody has been working, not only me as a football coach, but I think everybody's been working in a bit of chaos and havoc um, for a long while now. And I think we have to, if, if we haven't been able to adapt by now, then there's something wrong. So we're ready, I have to just be ready to make plan A and plan B and plan C and, and not complain too much. The situation is what it is. Um, we just try to make the best of every opportunity we get to be on the training pitch. We try to maximise the time we get with the players and be as be best prepared we can. Um, and I don't really want to, to be around making any excuses if it's if it's not good. Uh, I don't want to blame the situation. We just have to be ready to adapt. I just wonder how much you're looking forward to or otherwise going into a, a Christmas period. And I feel like when we've done interviews in the past, we've talked about your crazy schedule. You play on the 26th of December and then don't play again until the 2nd of Jan. That's very strange for the, the festive period. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, do you know what? Obviously, having managed abroad for like seven or eight years, always Christmas was off because the season finished at the end of November. So I've always been used to having December totally free. And then when I got the job, I remember saying to my wife, you'll probably not see me over Christmas time because it's so busy and... Uh, there'll be game, 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 and then I looked and I was like, we've got three get three league games in December. <laughs> what was all this fuss about a busy Christmas period? And now it will be two league games in December. So um, I really look forward to the Boxing Day game, and then I, in many ways I'm happy that we don't play 26th, 28th because with only one day rest, it's uh, you obviously compromise a lot of players in that moment. But then it's good that we get a gap and we can just focus. Uh, solely on the Wrexham game after the the Boxing Day. I wonder, looking you know immediately at, at Kings Lynn, what are their you know what what are their big you know big challenges that they will pose for you? Well, I mean they've obviously had a change of manager now, um, and and that immediately creates a new momentum and energy within the group. So I think they'll come with 
Uh, certainly a, re- a renewed energy within the squad. That's a normal thing when the when the manager changes, I guess. Um, and I think they were quite expansive uh, before they tried to play. Um, and I've watched little bits of them recently and they look like they have a, a greater focus on the defensive phases and trying to, to be a bit more disciplined in there. So I think that they'll probably look to... To, to sit a bit lower in frustrators and, and counter-attack. Um, and yeah, they've got some quality. The, the boy Josh Barrett that they brought in, uh, he's got a lot of quality in the number 10 spot. And they, they, they'll pose us some threats um, for sure. But I think it's a game where um, we have to try to continue doing a lot of the things that we have been doing recently because I think we've been in good form and we just have to keep building on that. I want to just touch on Kyle Wotton. He obviously reached 50 goals for the club. Just, just how important... Is he for Notts County? Um, well, I mean, the goals itself tell you its story that it's hugely important. Um, it's hugely important. But it's not, for me, Carl Wotton is not just about the goals that he scored. I mean, he's a brilliant goal scoring record uh, for this football club. But aside from that, he's a fantastic person, a brilliant, brilliant guy to, to have in the team. Um, sets an example every day on the training pitch and how he conducts himself. And also, all the bits around the goal scoring that he does, his link-up play, the, the way he uh, sets off the press and the, his defensive work. There's so many facets to his game that I think have evolved really, really well and I think he's developing into a really top striker. Well, that's a really interesting answer because on speaking to him, I, I mentioned that people that watch him regularly says he's unselfish, he should maybe go for goal more and he could perhaps have even more goals. I mean, it's a great record as it is, but do you think he should be shooting more or going for more goals or, or is as you've just said is that part of what makes him so special and so good yeah I think it I think you don't want to take away from the other bits that he does because he he leads the line so well um, and brings others into play that it's I think it's no surprise we've had a lot of different goal scorers uh, this season but that's also part of having a, a focal point that's unselfish so I think it's it's a good thing that we're not 100% reliant on one person to score the goals um, that's an important point and the fact that Woods helps bring others in means that we have other players that can also influence the game and score so that gives us a lot of different threats so um, no I think he's I, I've seen him grow since I've I've come in um, as a player on the pitch his game understanding is very good um, and I, I still think there's more to come from him I think we can still help take him further Kyle mentioned how it, the team and him, and he'd been speaking to fans, how much they've been purring about the great team goals, team goals, not just individual goals, but the build-up play. I just wonder, you know, wonder how much um, you like that and like what you're seeing, the way everyone's linking up. Yeah, I mean, I get a, a lot of personal satisfaction when I see those kind of goals because I think that's what we work really hard on on the training ground. And I think you see the second goal against South End, the second goal against Altrincham the other night, um, and quite a few that we've scored with really fantastic patterns of play leading up to the goals. I mean, I, I think they're top top quality goals um, that you would wouldn't be amiss at a higher level. Um, and the way the players combine, I think it shows that they are developing a real understanding of what we want. So, yeah, I take a lot of satisfaction out of... Do you know what? I prefer those team goals a lot more than like the, the wonder strikes that go in from miles out, the when we connect a lot of passes and open teams up. That They're the, they're the goals I enjoy to see. And, and generally, are those goals really down to what you and your coaching staff and the players put in on, on the training ground? Is that is that kind of the only way that you can build that, is to put those hours in and, and, and teach your ethos into the players? Yeah, I mean, of course I can come with ideas of how we should do it, but I mean, ultimately the players have got to execute it and they've done it really, really well. So, I mean, it's that the, those guys that go out there and, and deliver on it and and under pressure as well, you know, in the in big games so they, they've they've done it and um, credit to them but we've worked extremely hard on the training ground to to work out how we want to play and how we want to attack the games and and uh, but ultimately that it has to be the players that take that on board develop it and uh, improve it and I think it's a big credit to them that they've done that